Hi everyone, and welcome along to today's video. And I remember I did a long video some time back, so I'm going to cut this up and let you have a look. And this one is a helpful one for all use with a hot water cylinder. Yeah, you know, the old F&E system. No good for you combi boys, I'm afraid. And this is one where I kind of stuck a 250 watt element for a radiator into a hot water tank. And the idea being that it kind of gently warms the water only uses 250 watts and what it does it kind of means that the actual heating whether it's a gas boiler or whether it's an immersion heater um, won't have so much hard work to do the water will always be warm so this is really especially useful if you've got solar like me and you're in the feeding tariff because during the day um, I've got to use my energy they, they automatically take half of what I'm going to get in there working out that I'm going to use that much energy. Well, a lot of times I don't. So, um, 250 watts actually is absolutely really, really low. So, I've set a time on mine in the end that I did use at the time. And uh, I just let it come on in the morning until literally the sun went down and it switched off. I haven't got an f &E system anymore. I changed it all for a combi some time back. So, <laughs> I've had to use this old video so you will see me about... Uh, eight or nine years ago or somewhere like that <laughs> looking a little bit younger but not much so without further delay let's see how we can do this little job switch to it the video now this is the stage where we're going to fit this element into this tank and it's going to go into this feed here so i'm going to drain this cylinder out of the hose outside turn the valve off first of course drain it out and we're going to just disconnect this and using this T we're going to push this all in and make this fit up and I'll show you how to do that. Um, now if you can't get this in the bottom of your tank there because I'm lucky the fitting is facing outwards and I've got enough room to clear the, the, the element. Okay, we're at the tricky part now where we undo the feed. I'm just going to fold out just so you can see. You're going to get a little bit of water out of this feed and water's level to the bottom of there. We've took that way out and we're just unscrewing this one now. When we take this out in a minute, I'll show you how that bit goes back into that tank. Now, as you can see, I've made the T piece up. I've screwed the element in. And there's the cable for it. It's going to go down under the floor for me because I've got a void that I can connect anything up to. Now, I'm going to make this T piece up for the bottom of this because we mustn't allow hot water to go up the cold feed into the roof tank because this element's only just fitted with this on because it's an extremely thin tank, it's only 15 inches in diameter it's one of the old ones, most tanks to be 18 inch um, sizes you'll have no problem with that at all um, we'll go in dead easy so we'll carry on with the next stage well, there is the finished article as it should look if you can get it into your cold feed the bottom of your storage tank Well that's it, that's a, a little idea that may be worth a go, uh, depends if you feel handy enough to do it. I mean these days now I would have used a, 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 a Essex flange, that's a mouthful isn't it? <laughs> it's called an Essex flange and you drill a hole in the tank and put this thing in uh, and then it, it would do the job for you. But you know at the end of the day it, it's not an easy job but just another idea worth investigating. Okay, that's about it though. All my videos are going to go usual place, they're at 33. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.